All right. Nextly, there are options, and options come after the important stuff. So let's go back and we'll put in our displacement again with our curly brackets. All right, we again want t comma our range, the variable z. We want to start at zero. We want to go to ten. We want to end that silly thing. Comma our options. Now, carriage returns help the human see what's going on. Carriage returns don't mean a hoot to Mathematica. So carriage return, no carriage return. Mathematica doesn't care. But you'll notice that Mathematica does a very interesting formatting. Uh, choice if we use a carriage return. So I'm going to go carriage return and notice I'm subtly indented. That means Mathematica has recognized that this is a continuation of the previous function. So if we have several functions lined up, all of the options for those functions will be indented ever so slightly. The first option that I want to put on there is a plot label. Oh, doesn't helps the spell plot label right again. Capital P black option. It's good to go, and all many of our options, not all, but almost all of the options are followed by an arrow. Now I want to say something. If I wanted to say one thing, I could just type the one thing. If I want to say one thing, I could type the one thing, and I could keep going on. And let's just look at this for a brief moment. So notice that this was blue, as in it could be a variable, and Mathematica made it black here in the plot. But notice a very interesting thing will happen. If I go one blue shoe, one blue shoe, Mathematica thought that, well, you must want that in alphabetical order. And so it put it in alphabetical order, but notice blue is black. I mean, it, it recognized the command blue, and it goes, you must want a particular color, and you want no red, no green, and all blue. That's what you meant, right? And no, that's not really what we meant. So to tell Mathematica to put something in a very specific way, we need to um, make a comment. The way you make a comment in Mathematica is to use quotation marks. And our quotation marks we want to say is we want our one blue shoe, not a show, a shoe. Oh, and not a blue, a blue. All right, one blue shoe. Notice now it's slightly gray and everything else is still a go. And we make it happen and it goes exactly what we've put up here. It puts down here. So quotation marks are the way to get Mathematica to do exactly what you want it to do. So one, Mathematica will take functions that it recognizes and translate it in what it thinks is an appropriate way. Two, Mathematica will put your words in alphabetical order, which may or may not work case pending. But to avoid both of those, we want to go ahead and use um, quotation marks. All right, we want to continue our comments as we go on here. We'd like to label the axes. And again, we have a black function. It knew what we were talking about. Now with an axis label, we want to label both axes. Whenever you want to give Mathematica more than one thing, you need to say, by the way, Mathematica, I'm going to give you more than one thing. And the symbol for that is a squiggle. So this is a list of things, the X thing and the Y thing. To tell Mathematica that, we had to put the squiggle in there. And again, I don't want it monkeying with what I'm going to tell it to do. So to prevent monkeying, I'm going to put a quotation mark in there. And we knew that the x-axis is going to be time, and time is usually in seconds. And for the y thing, we know that that's a displacement. Yes, placement. And the unit for displacement is meters. Whoops, I missed on my thing. All right, so, and then again, and notice that we have purple. Mathematics is going, excuse me, you have forgotten something. And again, I have forgotten something, and that's my close bracket. All right, we'll run it. And we still have our one blue shoe, which I probably should change. It's not a terribly intelligent title. But again, it's labeled our axes exactly as I asked it to. Um, and we're moving forward with that. Now, there are an uber load of options for um, the plot function. And so... You won't remember them all, and I don't remember them all, but to ask Mathematica to show them to you, a couple of question marks, and a plot, and shazam, it will show you all of the options that exist 
um, for the plot function. And sometimes it gives you a little hint as to how you would code these things. Notice that sometimes there's a couple of squiggly brackets and sometimes there's um, a number in there. But that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot to me and it probably may not mean a whole heck of a lot to you. But Mathematica happily puts these little blue arrows. And the little blue arrows is please show me something else. So if I click on the little blue arrows, it will, if you give it a moment, open up another dialog box. And this dialog box is the help function. And the coding in the help function is wicked helpful. I mean, I can execute this code should I want to, or I can copy this code to my notebook and use it there. And if we scroll down under more information, all right, there they all are. There are all of the options that we were talking about before. So it, it tells you what it is as a default. What does Mathematica choose it to be? What does it do? And notice they're blue. So we can click on any one of these things. And again, if we pause ever so slightly, it will take us to that function where it's showing you the range of things. So we can set axes to true. We can set axes to only one of them being true. We can, again, only show one axis, right? And so there's our axes label again, right? And so this help function nests deeper and deeper and deeper. And every time you click on something which is blue, it will take you to that thing to give you more instructions. And again, you can simply copy and paste that right into your notebook and you're moving forward.